Hi there. I just wanted to have a video just to sum up everything um, we've sort of spoken about least squares uh, and what it helps us with really. So just going back to the sort of original problem we had, we had, for example, we, we said that there was some sort of population process which um, causally, causally connected education or the number of years of education with the wage rate. And assuming we have a sort of sample of the population, we have some sort of the data points and we can do a scatter plot of them in these two dimensions. And we spoke about how we might like to fit a line of best fit because that tells us basically what's ab what the average person might be doing within our sample. But in doing so, we also spoke about the other reason we were trying to fit a line of best fit. In fitting a line of best fit, we are basically trying to gauge some population values from a sample. Rather, we were trying to make some inference as to the impact of education on wages within our population using only our sample data. And we talk about one of the sort of ways in which we might like to summarize our data would be, what is the average effect of education on wages in the population? And um, we spoke about how we could draw a line of best fit subjectively, um, just by sort of drawing a line which seems to go through the middle of all our points in the data. Uh, and that would in turn define parameters which would give us some insight into the population. But we said that we needed some objective way of doing it. And in least squares, or in minimizing the sum of the square distances between our actual y, so in that case, that in this case it would be actual wages, minus the wages which are predicted from our sort of line of best fit. And we were trying to minimize the sum of each of these distances squared. And um, that's what least squared estimation does. And that told us, if we sort of went through and solved the whole thing, that alpha hat was equal to y bar minus beta hat times x bar, where x bar and y bar are the sample means, and beta hat is equal to the covariance of xi and yi, oh, sorry, yi, over the variance of xi. So what these least squares estimators are doing, if we feed in the sample data to them, um, alpha hat is gonna output a, a certain value, a point estimate of the population value alpha, um, which we could say might be, um, let's say $400, or let's say $300. And that tells us basically the intercept of our line um, and the y-axis. So in effect, this tells us what wage rate we might expect if we had zero years of education. Um, and again, feeding in our sample data to beta hat, that will tell us um, what the slope of our line is. So the slope of our line um, might be, so putting these two things together, our sort of alpha star and our beta star, which defines our gradient of our line, we have used least squares estimators to objectively fit our line to our sample data. So that's got rid of some of the subjectivity which we have when we just draw a line of best fit um, by hand. But we need to think about the conditions for under which the least squared estimator, the least squared estimators alpha hat and beta hat actually do provide relatively good estimates of the actual sample parameters, uh, the actual population parameters rather. So perhaps in the population, the um, wage rate which someone could expect on average for, for having zero years of education might be $250. And we, well, I haven't specified the beta hat here or, or, or what our um, least squared estimate of beta star is, um, but perhaps let's say it is an increase in $100 for every, uh, in a week for every extra year of education. Maybe that's what the sample tells us, but maybe in the population, the value is actually um, $95. And we need to think about the conditions under which our least squared estimates are relatively good estimates of what's going on in the population. And that's what we're going to be talking about in the next video.